Well, parents in Chatham, New Jersey, are disturbed by what they say is a local school's inordinate emphasis on teaching the beliefs of Islam, while at the same time suppressing any expression of Christianity. Students in a Chatham Middle School social studies class were shown a cartoon video describing the five pillars of Islam, the religion's core practices. The video included such statements as, quote, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And it ends with a non-Muslim accompanying a Muslim friend to a mosque to pray. Well, parents Libby Hilton Rather and Nancy Gayer say the video doesn't just explain Islam, it promotes it, and they join us now. Thanks so much for joining us. So, um, Libby, describe, if you would, why you think this instruction crosses the line from simply teaching about a religion to promoting it. Um, well, thanks for having us, Tucker. Um, I think it, it crosses the line because it teaches one religion and not all others. It's in a right. world culture and geography course, and no other re religion is taught mm -hmm. and um, to me that's not education because in order to educate you need to teach all um, and I also feel that um, if you if you're gonna teach it to that degree you're teaching you're teaching the tenets or the doctrines of a religion so our question was okay then if you're gonna do that in the public school would you also be comfortable um, teaching the doctrines of Christianity for example well, sure. Yeah. Uh, to say, would, would you be comfortable in a public school to say, uh, I, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to him, but, comes to God but through me? And right. I don't know that the school would say that. Well, I mean, and that's kind of the question. I mean, I, I personally think it's worth learning uh, what the great world religions are about. But, Nancy, if, if you asked your child's teacher to say, well, you know, teach him the Nicene Creed or the Catechism, what kind of response would you get? Well, I actually had an experience about three years ago. Um, my son put together a fundraiser, and um, it was a video production. And in the fundraiser, in the video production, he had a small quote of the Bible. And they told him, uh, they pulled him aside, and they told him and said, you know, this belongs in Sunday school, but went ahead and told the class that the video didn't work. So I'm all in favor of teaching religion if it's all done in the same manner, with right. the same depth. Well, I think that's a, that's a fair request for any parent or any citizen. So, I mean, Libby, I've seen stories like this before, and they follow a pretty familiar course. Parent sees something like this, parent complains, parent gets denounced as Islamophobe or racist. Has that happened to you, either of you? Oh, both of us, to, to a great extent. Um, we were labeled as bigots immediately at, following uh, the Board of Ed meeting in an op-ed. Um, and then all over Facebook with people who knew us or, or, or didn't know us, xenophobic, um, Islamophobes. I mean, it went as far as the KKK, which I don't know what that has to do with this, but... Huh. Yeah, so I was, did, unfortunately, I was stared down at a grocery store, too, and I, I believe I was in the express line with just 10 items, but yet I was still stared down, so <laughs> it was pretty unnerving. I mean, everybody in town was really just really unnerving. Interesting. So how would the superintendent respond to this? How, well, how he responded in the meeting was to basically say, um, we'll look into it and maybe we'll have the curriculum committee look into it. The curriculum committee meetings aren't public, first of all. And second of all, when we emailed the superintendent the next day to discuss in detail what we could do to address this, he refused to meet with us. Yeah, we just huh. wanted to keep the conversation going with him and just say, you know, we realize the community is not happy with how we presented this before the board. Can we talk to you again? Can we talk to the leader, the, the head of the curriculum? And he wrote back and said, it's not going to be productive. It wouldn't to be me. productive. And what we really wanted to discuss with him, Tucker, is um, the state sets high level goals, but we wanted to know who actually picks the curriculum, who picks the videos that they were shown, who picks the 20 page PowerPoint. Who decides what gets included and what doesn't? And, uh -huh. and you can't get an answer. I, I can promise you this without knowing any details, but I'd bet you lunch that interest groups are involved in the vetting of those materials. I, I would can like promise lunch. Promise you that. I would so, like lunch. <laughs> but, but, but basically, the superintendent said to you, "I don't care about your opinion. I'm not interested in hearing from you," and blew you off. Well, he, he said it wouldn't be productive and we should continue to come to the Board of Education meetings and express our opinions and concerns in the public. The issue with that is you're only given a short time to speak and it's usually, right. you can't get into that level of detail. And sometimes it's after the fact. Oh, right. Well, I think you've got a legitimate complaint and I hope that this helps him hear you. Libby Nancy, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Tucker.